Hello, I have a little something I wrote I want to share with you. It says, hello, here we go. I'm so happy to share some books with you and some fun activities to do. So let's get started and take a look. I will search my box, my boxes, for a book. I have more books than I need, but sometimes I just love to read. I wrote that little poem to share because today I'm going to be reading some poetry out loud. Some of my favorite poems by some of my favorite poets. So I hope you enjoy them just as much as I do. And when I find a poem that I love and I want to read again and again or I want to share with somebody like you guys, I will sometimes write it in my journal or in a notebook so that I can keep it. And I also saw a great idea once upon a time for a thing called a poetry pocket. And here I just cut a pocket out of a pair of pants, glued it to a cereal box, and then I have a place that I can write down a poem I want to remember or my own poems that I write, and I stick them and keep them in this pocket. But this comes with a little bit of a warning. If you're repurposing a pocket, make sure it's from an old pair of pants that nobody's wearing anymore. Okay, I have a couple poems to share with you out of this pocket. We'll start right here. This comes out of a book called A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. And the poem's called The Homework Machine. The homework machine, oh, the homework machine, most perfect contraption that's ever been seen. Just put in your homework, then drop in a dime, snap on the switch, and in 10 seconds time, your homework comes out quick and clean as could be. Here it is, nine plus four, and the answer is three. Three, oh me, I guess it's not as perfect as I thought it would be. Kind of a silly poem. Let's try for another one. This comes from a book called My Dog May Be a Genius by Jack Prilutsky. The title is If You Were a Rhinoceros. If you were a rhinoceros, I still would be your friend. And if you were a platypus, our friendship would not end. I'd like you as a walrus, camel, cat, or kangaroo. It doesn't matter what you are. I'd still be friends with you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put those back in my poetry pocket. And we're going to move on to a book from my shelf called If I Were in Charge of the World and Other Worries by Judith Viorst. Some poems can help us relate to each other because we have shared experiences. This one's called Night Fun. I hear eating. I hear drinking. I hear music. I hear laughter. Fun is something grown-ups never have before my bedtime, only after. <laughs> Poems can also help us express how we're feeling. This one is called Learning. I'm learning to say thank you. I'm learning to say please. I'm learning to use Kleenex, not my sweater when I sneeze. I'm learning not to dribble and I'm learning not to slurp. And I'm learning, though it sometimes really hurts me, not to burp. I'm learning to chew softer when I eat corn on the cob. And I'm learning that it's much, much easier to be a slob. <laughs> I know how that feels when you're trying to break bad habits or learn something new. It can be a little bit frustrating. Okay, another great book. This is called This Place I Know, Poems of Comfort, put together by Georgia Hurd. Some poems can inspire. Hold Fast Your Dreams by Louise Driscoll. Within your heart, keep one still secret spot where dreams may go, and sheltered so may thrive and grow. Where doubt and fear are not, oh, keep a place apart within your heart for little dreams to go.
Another one about dreams. Poetry can also stir up all sorts of emotions. Happy, sad, all different. Dreams by Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. And the last book I'd like to share is The Tree That Time Built, a celebration of nature, science, and imagination. Selected by Marianne Hoberman. Poetry can be about anything. It can be about objects, or it can be about experiences. It can be about nature, science, and it can make us very curious about lots of things. This one's called 206 by Jeff Moss. A grown-up human being has approximately 206 different bones in his or her body. Can you imagine, then, how many different bones a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex would have? Well, a Tyrannosaurus Rex has approximately 206 different bones in his or her body. Same as us. Hmm... Poems can also help us understand each other and connect. This one's called You and I by Marianne Hoberman, and it can get a little confusing, so here we go. Only one eye in the whole wide world, and millions and millions of you. But for every you is an I to itself, and I am a you to you too. But if I am a you, and you are an I, and the opposite is also true, it makes us both the same somehow, yet splits us each in two. It's more and more mysterious, the more I think it through. Every you, everywhere in the world, is an I, and every I in the world is a you. This poem just makes me think how we're all unique individuals and we also share this world. So we have similarities and differences, which leads me to a little fun poetry activity that my family and I did the other night. I call them hand poems. We each traced our hand and glued them down onto an old paper bag that we cut out. And we wrote our name on the palm of the hand and then some things that describe us on the fingers. So let me read you these little poems. This is my son's. His says, David, athletic, creative, organized, quick tennis player. And then there's mine. And then I have a daughter and this one is hers, and it says, musical, creative, artistic, likes writing, sound. And we also did our dog. Cookie, soft, furry, barky, cute. This could be something you could do with your family or the people in your home. You could hang it as a poster, or it makes a great accordion book. I hope you enjoyed the poems today, and thank you for listening. Bye!